when I'm in a party and some people ask me uh, what I'm doing in my life, I'm only telling that um, I'm a piano player. There's a lot of small producers, uh, little producers, mm -hmm. um, who do some music, who like only thinking about, oh, I love that guys, I love that music, so I'm gonna do exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I love, uh, I love, love, love. <laughs> I love being in love, you know. <laughs> I want just people to to know that I'm <laughs> that I'm fucking passionate. <laughs> Hey. Very, very requested interview. Yeah. <laughs> so you're born in Normandy, is it? Or? Exactly, yeah, yeah, in France. And you're, so your dad, is he originally from Morocco or exactly, how? Exactly, yeah. So did Morocco. he move to France for work or? Exactly, so he moved at, he was, he was 18. Mm. So he moved for to that. Was he the only one in his family who moved or? Exactly. Wow. What does he do? Uh, he does engineering uh, studies. So for eight years. Mm -hmm. So it was like really long. So he was uh, initially like at the at the north of the France. Oh. You know, and he moved to Normandy then. And what does your mom do? She's uh, in psychology. Oh, so, so they're both kind of academic. It's really, yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's really different, you know. <laughs> How big was the Moroccan culture when you were growing up? Uh, so I went every years to Morocco. Oh, wow. Uh, because I have a lot of family there. But now it's been a long time. I've never been there. Mm -hmm. in like eight years. But it was cool. I had some good memories about, about Morocco. And it's good to have like different culture in the family. How um, about growing up in your house, did your dad cook Moroccan food or? Oh no, <laughs> oh it's a bit cliche, but no, he, he cook, he's better at French oh, really? cooks than Moroccan cook, yeah, for real. <laughs> How about music, did he play any Moroccan music? Oh, he, was, he wasn't listening to Moroccan music a lot, you know, he was more like, he, he's listening to a lot of Queen or oh. Scorpion. Yeah, he was really inspired by uh, the open culture. Oh. So that's why he wasn't listening to a lot of Moroccan music. Mm -hmm. You know. How about your mom? What was she playing in the house? Yeah, when I was really young, like I was listening, like we were listening together to a lot of uh, classical music, like uh, Chopin, like uh, Bach, or. We're listening to, um, to a lot of uh, rock, indie stuff. Uh, I can't remember anymore like which bands, but yeah, it was like really different. You know, each Sunday that was like um, that was like a ritual, you know, mm -hmm. to uh, to listen to a lot of music, to not watching at the TV, but just you know um, developing that music. Uh, uh, you know, like yeah, I think yeah. I think that that was good. That was good for us to uh, have only music, not TV, on Sunday. Oh um, wow! But just like playing in the house, or did you actually go to watch concerts? No, or? playing in the house. Oh. But it's like it's cool anyway. Yeah, it really is. How about so? How did you think of learning cello when you were five? I mean, that's very specific instrument. Yeah, uh, I don't know why I chose uh, cello because like it sounds weird for a five years old guy to tell to his mom, oh I wanna do some cello. Yeah. Um, but I don't know why, but it was really cool because um, like it's a, it's a, an instrument hard to play, so you have to be rigorous. Yeah. And, but it's a really elegant instrument. Yeah. And it helped me a lot. Um, to uh, to like to learn some other instruments um, because it's rigorous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, as so I studied um, piano and guitar as an autodidact. Uh, I was I was in you know so I was in a group uh, like in group lessons. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we did an, or an orchestra in my in my um, uh, music school. Oh okay. So. So after each uh, courses, I was asking to, like all the guys who were playing to the play, piano and guitar, uh, to lend me the, the instruments mm -hmm. to play for a few hours. That was 
completely uh, obsessed by all the instruments I've I've seen in in the in the space. You know. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite composer? It's uh, Chopin, definitely. Mm. Yeah, because it sounds so you know it sounds so so modern for for a guy who who made his music like uh, 100 years ago. Yeah. You know? <laughs> How would you describe your personality back then? Uh, I was really shy, like, uh, you know, when you're doing some music, you have your own project, so you can overcome shyness. I don't like to speak, um, like to, to talk too much about my music when I'm with some friends or mm. when I'm with some people uh, in the space. It's like, I prefer staying discreet about it, yeah. you know, when I'm with some people who don't know me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, so <laughs> like where, uh, when I'm in a party and some people ask me uh, what I'm doing in my life, I'm only telling that um, I'm a piano player and oh. you know, but I don't <laughs> talk about modest. my project. <laughs> yeah. Did you like school? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, you, um, so <laughs> everybody is going to tell you the same, but you like school because it's really like... You can't be social if you don't go to school. But yeah, yeah I, I was a bit gifted at school, mm. but uh, you know, I, I didn't have to, um, I didn't have to like uh, spend too much time no, on my on my homework so mm -hmm. to have some good marks. So that was cool because it it, it, it like it permits me to. Um, to spend more time on the music. Yeah. Did you already know when you were young that you wanted to be a musician for your life? Oh, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, I was only practicing music because, like, just because of, of the fun, you know? Mm -hmm. It was really fun for me. Um, what did you think you can be then? I don't... I didn't have any idea about it. It's like, yeah, I know... So I was only thinking I'm gonna... Uh, to die for uh, uh, for some long years <laughs> to mm -hmm. have a job, but I don't know which job. I didn't know which job. Um, but yeah, like when I when I started my project as Petit Biscuit, and I saw that I had a lot of feedbacks, reactions, and a lot of people who started to following me. So it grows up in my head, and I was telling me that, that yeah. I want to do that, uh, like I want to devote myself into my project. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how you found the Bonobo Black Sand? Yeah, so that, w that was the first CD I bought. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, because you know, um, it's like when you, when you were born in that um, kind of gen, gen like in that, in that kind of generation when um, like people don't buy CDs. It's like when you buy CDs, it's only because you're fun, mm -hmm. you know, of the work. And that was the first one I bought because I'm fan of this project and I want to support it. So that was what I, why I bought this CD first. Um, and yeah, I remember it was like a big discovery for me. I was only listening to some music like universal music, so it's like a, a genre, a style, but Bonobo was different because he has his own universe and yeah. he's doing his like a unique music and I I've, I've never heard that before. <laughs> so I was totally um, excited yeah. about playing this city. What were your yeah. friends listening to? Were they listening to Flume or was it just by yourself you found that right? So when I discovered Flume, uh, all my friends uh, never heard about it about that guy mm -hmm. so I showed them and they really liked it yeah um, but it's cool because you know when you when you're the only guy uh, who's spending like a lot of hours to find some good music to listen to uh, even in Europe because we don't have like there's more uh, radio um, you know in real world there's more people with listening to the radio to discover some sounds so that's cool to show to you to your friends yeah. what you're listening you know it's it's more <laughs> and it's cool because I, I was you know i was like proud of showing my test yeah to my so friends. i remember showing flume to my friends and i'm like 
I know yeah. this guy's gonna be really big and he didn't. I'm exactly. like, so proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember how Sunset Lover, how, how you got it out there? Was it, it was through your friend Thomas, right? You put it on the YouTube. My friends, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So I, I was talking uh, since, I don't know, since a year with Thomas before releasing Sunset Lover. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was making him listen to a lot of demos that I made. And so I, I had, like, basically, I had only the voice for Sunset Lover. I made him listen, he was like, you have to do something on it. Um, so it was only, a, like, an acapella that I cut it, you know, and doing something, like, so much different um, the, by uh, pitching the voice, by cut it, by... Uh, yeah, it was, like, a big process and so I, I want the instrument like the instrumental part of the track to be really um, simple mm -hmm. so there's only a guitar a marimba and some like kind of um, flamenco perks I don't yeah. know but <laughs> it's like it, it sounds really simple but I think that's why a lot of people uh, likes to listen to these tracks because it's like it's a mood you know yeah so did you already have a team, a management team, when you put that song? No, not at all. Oh, so it was just you? Yeah, just by myself. Um, After that, do you know how it got even bigger? Were blogs posting it or...? Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> so, it was that time when uh, when when you were wo when you were number one in on the uh, hype machine. Yeah. You were, like, really happy and that, that was, the, <laughs> that was the, um, the case for Sunset Lover. So, a lot of blogs, a lot of uh, people talked about this track and it was really viral but also really organic mm -hmm. you know like organic development that made me really happy because you can prove that if you do a big track you don't you don't need like anything at the start to, yeah. sh to show to the people like you you can make a, a good music and it's a really simple process but it sounds really cool because of the internet because of all those things then like all the people didn't add 10 years ago, you know. Yeah. How did you meet your management team? Um, it was... <laughs> <laughs> I saw a fist bump. <laughs> yeah. Two years ago, yeah. It was, it was so... It was two months before I released my first EP. So David come, came to Paris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> David came to Paris and we talked for a few hours about my project. And, but but I, met, I met a lot of people into the music industry before. Uh, meeting my manager. Oh. Um, so yeah, it was a long process to to find that good guy who's gonna help me in my project. It's really simple and it's good to be independent because uh, you can work with the guys you want. You want to work with them. You can do whatever you want, and it's really exciting because you can like. There's not a basic uh, way of developing your your music. It's like you can. You can re reinventing uh, your way to communicate about your music. Mm -hmm. Always thinking about a new way to communicate for a new release, for a new tour. Yeah. Record labels also started reaching out to you. Yeah, I'm, I met a lot of record label from the US, from France. Th that was good to meet them because that was one of my first experiences in, into the professional part of the music to meet, to meet this guy. Before I was only seeing music, yeah, only for fun, you know. But it's good to know that, like, a lot of people working on them. As a 16 years old guy, you, you can't even imagine that much people working on the music and, and, um, and so like, true. yeah, when you grow up, it can be like evident, but it's not that much when you're really young. How much involvement did your parents have in your music? I think they gave me more advice in that uh, artistic part, you know. Oh. They are not so oppressing, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that professional part, in that, you know, they let me live my life and live my own experiences. But as a as an artistic part, it's always good to have the feedbacks because um, it's funny because they always tell me like, "You're my son," but <laughs> I want them to be really um, honest with you. So if you if I don't like what you're doing, I'm gonna tell you. Mm. And it's it's really funny because you can be sure that your parents can be really honest with you, you know, yeah. because you're you're you're, you're them sons. And they were okay with you quitting. Was it university? Yeah, yeah, yeah they were okay because uh, 
um, Yearly touring, they're just, yeah. yeah, they're, they're just seeing what, what's happening right now. So I, I tried to go to the university for two months, I think. But it was really hard because of all that tour. So I was, I think I went like four days, <laughs> not more. <laughs> and I, and I, I, leave, I leave like immediately because that was, that was too much. I didn't have any time. And that was b just before the release of the album. So I was, oh. I, w I was really, really busy. Did you have a, what you were going to study? Um, math. Oh. So yeah. So really different than music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So opposite. it was just a, a fun thing for you to study math. Like you are, you weren't thinking of having a career. It was just like a, you were good at math. Exactly. Yeah. I was only good at math um, before starting the studies at the university that I want to make music. It was only like a. B plan, you know, but the music was the first one, and I already knew it when I started to make some mess. Maybe I can make, I can like make music, make make my tours, and go to not frequently to the university, but mm. have some good max. But it, it didn't work <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. How did you meet Lido? Uh, so I met him in Paris. He sent me a message and uh, let's go to a studio. I uh, have some few days to spend in Paris, so I make him listen to a lot of demos. He finds some good ones, but he was like, okay, so that one is not my favorite, but I can do something really good with that. So I was, okay, I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna test, because I, I knew uh, Lido as a producer, but not as a vocalist uh, yeah. people, you know. So I was really curious about what he's gonna do with, with that track. He was like really quick, um, like, Two weeks uh, <laughs> after, and that was a really good one. Come on, Love at first sight. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just I, clicked. Exactly, I just click and enjoy the track so much because it's really good at writing some lyrics, uh, finding the good melody to fit that lyrics, and it's fantastic because. When he's doing something, it's always working. We finished that track it's called Problems. Uh, so he was in Japan, I think, or in, yeah, in Tokyo, I don't know. Yeah, he was in Tokyo, I think. He recorded the last verse in Tokyo. I was in, I don't know, I was on tour, I think, in Europe. Um, so that, that was kind of international track. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. How about the inspiration behind Safe? So Safe is a kind of... Uh, so it, for me it sounds really cin cinematic, it's like really epic, you know, with all that breath. Strange feeling because at the start it's like, it's really chill, um, there's that small uh, voices, I've pitched it. So it sounds really chill uh, at first sight. When you go like further to the track, you can see that it's not uh, that chill and the mm -hmm. drop is really, um, it's not aggressive but it's, but you, no, you're not so safe, you know. Mm. And you really want to collaborate with Drake, right? <laughs> yeah, that's I think like every every artist in the world wants to color to collaborate with him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I want to. <laughs> Do you think you'll collaborate? You want to collaborate with more rappers? Like yeah. you said, you like the ASAP and the Muramasa. Yeah, definitely for the future. I think it will be cool to collaborate with some rappers because I love how it goes really popular and it's even cooler because I'm I was doing some chill music at the start but I'm going more and more into like trap music uh, that kind of stuff and I think that will fit great with a rapper we did some few tries with some guys and and we're gonna do some other ones uh, I'm really curious about and it's cool because in the rap game there's more characters than there's you know it's like more being a character than, than an artist. Exactly. First. So it's like when you when you studying talking with a guy uh, in that game, it's really different from that pop uh, game. You know? Yeah, I know exactly. So, I've interviewed a lot of rappers. Exactly. So I've, every, every guy is have a different um, way of seeing music. Always a different conversation mm -hmm. with, with these guys. I'm really curious about testing some. Like doing some other tries. How do you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you made? I was only doing some really organic stuff, um, but I I like to transform that organic thing into into a more electronic thing because I'm discovering every day how to 
um, how to use uh, better and better uh, all that synthesizers, all that uh, effect to have my own signature sounding really unique. It's cool because when you're working with a guitar or a piano at the start, it's only like you're finding the right melody, but it's gonna be the same sound. And when you're trying to to touch on that uh, effect stuff, um, to record it, to put it on a tape recorder, I don't know, but like I have a big process to completely transform the sound. It's your own process, so it sounds like you, and um, that's why I love electronic music because you can be innovative, you can really be yourself. You yeah. Know? What would you say have been your biggest challenges so far? Find my own sound because mm -hmm. there's a lot of artists, like, there's one guys for 10 guys who can make some sounds because it's really simple today to to yeah. make some music like every every guys can buy a computer and starting to make some sounds and but it's really important who's gonna make the definition of your sound uh, and it's really hard because there's a thousand guys who tested uh, like what you did before you know it, it's hard to talk about this music because it's all about feelings and I think if you want to find your own sound, if you want to find your own identity, you have to think about yourself first because you have to, to know what you really are, you have to uh, be in peace with yourself, you have to, to be uh, confident a bit, not too much, but <laughs> um, because you have to be yourself to do your own music. There's a lot of small producers, uh, little producers, mm -hmm. um, who do some music, who like only thinking about, oh, I love that guys, I love that music, so I'm gonna do exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna listen to your music because there's a guy who's doing the same and she'll be better than you. Yeah, <laughs> and <that's true. laughs> so you don't have to be like the prisoner of a style of a genre. This style of this genre um, works really well it, or it's really trendy, but uh, in like in two, three years, it's not gonna be trendy anymore. I think we're searching for some one of a kind persons in, in the music because, um, so that, that, that was, a, that's why I'm, I was buying this uh, Bonobo CD first because if you want to be fan of, of a project you have to be fan of the music but you have to be fan of uh, the people like the guy who's making this music. What does love mean to you? It sounds, it sounds, it's a good word. <laughs> it's like I've never had any issues with love for the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully uh, it's gonna be the same in the next two years. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's cool because it's a universal subject uh, in all that um, music lyrics, uh, in all that because it's really inspiring for all the people. It's like we're living in the society where, um, like, where there's a lot of superficial people, um, materialist people, and this is. So love gonna stay here forever, you know. Mm -hmm. One of the only subjects we can talk about forever because there's a lot of things to uh, tell about love. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I love, uh, I love, love, love. <laughs> I love being in love, you know. <laughs> Last question, what do you want to be remembered for? So I, I want people to know that I'm like a simple guy who's enjoying like simple things in life. Only, uh, passionate about music, there's no thinking um, about something else and when you're obsessed uh, with your music, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good thing because um, I met a lot of guys who's doing music only mm. for all that things and it's hard because it's like music uh, has become a way of being famous. Being an artist is really hard because you always have to be asking yourself about a lot of things because it's like you're obsessed with that thing and you're gonna do it for the rest of your life. So I'm really amazed by um, some guys I met in the music industry who were really passionate about, uh, about only their project and only um, mm. their music. So I want just people to 
since you know that I'm <laughs> that I'm fucking passionate doing some music forever. Yeah, I and, love this. You know, it's like, but I I know that also when you lead uh, that kind of project, you have to be you have to be in, but also you have to keep that personal part of yourself. Like there's Mary, there's Petit Biscuit, mm -hmm. and I have to keep that Mary's part because it's really important in your project. But it, it's really, it, sometimes it's hard, you know, because it's like a full-time job, it's like a 24 hours job, you know. There's no, we're not counting hours, we are not um, uh, thinking about something else than, uh, than uh, our project. So, it, it, it could be hard sometimes, but it's like, um, I'm staying simple. Yeah, I love this, this is so awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>